Uh, it's very nice to see so many coaches, athletes, and also friends all, all around the world here in Kuortane. Uh, Kuortane is not, not my hometown, but most of the time I, I will be here <laughs> because I, my working place is only one kilometer from here. So I ended my working day 30 minutes ago. I am a teacher, pr primary school teacher. That is, that is the thing I, I'm doing by my work. And, and of course, all the, all the drawing sessions and many other sessions we are doing here in Kuortane Hall. I will start my presentation as I have done every presentation in English. First of all, I'm sorry, my English is not so good. But anyway, I'm speaking much, much better English than most of you Finnish. <laughs> I'm sure about that. So I try my best, that is the main thing. And of course, you can read all the details from there. Okay, I, first I, I, I will uh, tell you about my background, how I became a coach. Of course, there is my own career as a javelin thrower. I was quite a talented thrower, I think so. I did almost 70 meter, age of 15, with 600 grams. And after that, I did all the mistakes th that athlete can do. I, I really think so. The main reason is, was that I didn't have an own coach at all. So I, I made my own training programs to me under the uh, age of 18, 19, I did first program. Of course, I tried to try to solve how to train good, how to, how to get better and better traveling thrower. At the age of uh, 26, I knew that what, what, I, what should I do, what kind of exercise, what kind of, kind of uh, training program I have to make for myself. But then I, I, had a, I, I, I already had a shoulder problems. So, so that's that, that how I, I go forward. And of course, technical issues. I knew exactly what, what should I do, what kind of details I have to improve to get a, get a better javelin thrower. But all the, all the wrong models of the technique was already there. I couldn't fix those. And then came this small boy. <laughs> Tero Pitkämäki came and he was first athlete I started to coach. coach. And this day is very special day because we have a birthday. We have a 20th birthday. In November 1996, I started to coach Tero. 20 years ago. <laughs> so this is long, long journey. And I have learned a lot, of course, from Tero and all the other athletes and coaches. I, I, I know most of you here. So I think about what I think about technique is the next slide if this machine will work, hopefully. Maybe I have to start once again. Let's do once again. All right. Here is the main circle. I think we, we, we all have the same idea, good technique, and we have to do good drawing sessions. But it's not so easy. If you want to be good drawer, top level drawer, you have to take care, I think, all these things around this technical 
assessors. Most of the, uh, I think the main thing is keep how to keep healthy. And, and of course, you know that, that even small injury can, can uh, change your technique. If you are doing, do, if you are throwing, doing throwing sessions, you are not 100% healthy. That is the main. That is very important thing, and uh, I, I will talk later. The Tero, Tero, Tero's career has been many, many years that there has been uh, healthy problems. Physical abilities. It's quite uh, important for me to say that that uh, of course you can throw nicely, very good technical way, 60 meters or 70 meters. But if you want to be a high-level thrower, there has to be something in your body. There has to be strength, there has to be uh, uh, good coordination, there has to be good jumps, good shot throws, and, uh, and so on. But every single uh, detail of the uh, strength working has to be explosive, I think so. So you have to, you don't need uh, physical abilities which are quite a, uh, like a, a slow, slow, slow strength. Hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Explosive, you have to change, you have to change that strength you get to the explosive model. I, I think so. And many, many times, if you don't have physical abilities, you cannot do uh, some technical details. Ex example, Terrace Technique. He will throw, throw and his run-up is very, very slow. Lo low. Ankles are very low. Here. Not slow, but low. Okay. And, and you have to you have to go <laughs> seven meters per, per second to the, to the against the block leg from that position. If you don't have strength behind that, it's almost impossible. Right order in training system. I think it's, it has to be there's hard training sessions, and then you have to be also recovering training sessions. Our week, my plan is always that there is very high intensive training sessions and then, then recovery training session. And the weekly program goes like this. And that is important also to be a healthy atlas. And of course, it has to be individual, that training system. And just right, in, 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 I don't <laughs> pronounce that word, but technique for the athlete. Uh, I think if, if uh, Teros uh, start to imitate Thomas' technique and Thomas start to imitate Teros' technique, both are going down. I would like to try. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it, it has to be, there, there has to be like personality on, on your technique. And I really think that in Finland and also in German, athletes and coaches are, uh, has understand that thing. That every, every top athlete is throwing a little bit different technique. Of course, there, there has to be some things you have to do right, biomechanical right. But in, 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 who is saying that word to me? All right. <laughs> okay. Then mobility. I, I mean, you uh, you have to be flexibility. There has to be flexibility. I think the most important places is, of course, your shoulder, upper back. Upper back is is very important, and also hip line area or hip hip area. This this part of the body. There has to be flexibility. And this is also, I will talk about later about stress levels, but concentrate on full time. 
So uh, technical session, drawing session has to be most important session in a week. Yeah, an athlete has to be 100% to ready for that. And also that also so that coach, is coach the coach say something to the athlete, it stop here inside your head. Because I have seen many athletes, I, I, am, I, I have talked, and many other coaches have talked, the matches came here and at the same time from here, like blowing in the wind or something. It's to, so if you want to get a good technique, you have to be thinking also the technique technical details. Okay, these circles are, ev ev every single circle is the things we have worked and, and this is how, this has been our target, good technique. Okay, now the journey of the 20 years will start. Uh, 1996, 20 years ago, uh, Tero, Tero had very natural, very good, good technique when he came to me. That is, that is the, that was fantastic. Uh, he has uh, thrown like three, four hours, many, many, many days, and going back to his home, watching videos. Example: Jan Selesny throws, and then back to the park and throwing once again. Hundred of hundred, hundred throws. I think a few hundred throws in one day. And I didn't change that that run up, which was very, very, very nice and very, very good, very natural time. But I start. We starting so that uh, upper body was closing, but hip line hip line and legs were going quite as straight, like, like this. This was the first thing we, we, we started to work out, working. And of course, we started to work these main few things like block leg pull, long, long pull, and movement of the arm. Tero had a very, very serious problem with his elbow already age of 15. So, so the movement wasn't the right. It was a little bit like a baseball throwing, throwing arm. So we, we tried to get it better. And this was one thing that landing from the crossover was quite up, upright. And I will show the video of Teros Teros, under 17 years old. So you can see what I mean. The run-up was the run-up was very simple. The withdraw, uh, the traveling back was very, 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 very easy one. No, no impulse steps like normal finish throwers are doing, jumping uh, like one impulse step a little bit higher. It, Tero's technique was just like, just running against the block leg. And I think it was very, very, good style for the, for the start the career. So we didn't change anything about the technique. We, we, we just continue the work we, we, we already done. And, and one thing was, which was changing was the, was the body position. So the body the body were cropping a little bit lower and lower because the strength levels getting higher and higher. And it, 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 was, it came also like a natural way. 
And, and main thing for these years was healthy athlete all the time. That was the time from 2001 to 2004. Every single throwing session, like uh, as a healthy athlete. And, and that's why we get a lot of good throws with good technique. And that, that, that was the most important year for the whole process of Tero, Tero's career, this part. And at the same time, all the physical ability is getting higher and higher, step by step. But there, was, there is my, my philosophy is that, that uh, athlete, javelin thrower, can, can increase his strength levels like 10 percent, only 10 percent each year. Because if you are taking more, it always, always something to do with your, with your uh, speed and flexibility and so on. And many times the injury, injuries and healthy problems are coming because of that. Try to take too much, too much in one year. So now their strength level is very high, but they have worked, we have worked for those levels from year 1996 to 2008. The 12, 12 years progression for that. 12 years working, step by step, higher and higher. And then here is Teros throw from year 2003. Tero was throwing in this competition first time over the 80 meters. And you can see the ankles were a little bit lower. And next year was Olympic year, and this is uh, second row from the final. Tero was eight, number eight on that on that final, and it was very very near that medal came to Finland. So it was only one one meter, little bit over the little bit over one meter behind the bronze medal. And I I watched this film. Once again, last week, I, I watched how, how much space there was behind the line. Uh, maybe metal throw, I don't know exactly. So crossovers start from the eight meter mark, so. This was uh, 80, 83.02. And not so good throw. Okay, then we, we are coming to the year 2005, and that was the year, the very big step. It was 2004, the personal best was 84, 60, 64, and 10, 91, 53. And what what we what we did, what what we what we ch changed, it was we decided to take a lot of more rotation to the throw, and that means that javelin was sideways behind your head. And, and eyes were more to the right, if you are right handed thrower to the right, and eyes to the, to the uh, tip of the javelin as long as possible. And one, one thing was, I, I will also talk later, but it was that, that free hands movement, what they, they, do, they do, do quite well. So here until the end, he was pushing this part of the 
free hand, free arm here. So that kind of things. And it works better than we could believe. And of course I have to show this video. video. The, the competition was a little bit weird. I don't know, maybe that's right for in English because Tero was struggling very much his technique. He, he was starting with 79, 80 meters, 79 meters. And I, I, I walked behind the throwing place. So I will film next few throws so we can watch afterwards what kind of mistake Tero did <laughs> this competition. And fourth throw was 82. 81 or something like that, and then, boom, 91.53. So it was that kind of throw. And you can see the rotation here. It's it not so big difference, but it's, it's there. And of course, rotation, you have to get it here before you are starting to throw. But just a few, few moments before the block leg is landing to the ground, it was here, and then, boom. That kind of throws, there are got ma many on that year and and that was very nice to go forward forward to the next seasons and uh, the same thing goes on and on 2007 was the best year of carry so far so far there are it there are it many 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 times over the 90 meters and 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 of course, a world champion, gold medalist from this year. And this is one of the best throws in, in, from this season. And I really think that in that this season, Tero was a little bit un unlucky. Uh, I, I mean, better conditions. There was a little bit headwind or wind at all and nothing, nothing, nothing like that. He did in big stadiums over the 90 meters and so on. So there, there was a potential to throw, throw uh, over ni ni 93 and so on. And one, one thing was the problem was on that year. Maybe you, you have watched these vi uh, videos from the YouTube. They were very high throws. Maybe a little bit l lower throw, 83, 90, 93 meters. So, so that did. That this was the, maybe the one of the best rows in this season. And I think the, maybe the one of the fastest run up on, on Tero's career. So see, see, he really, 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 really fast beat till the end. We can we we will watch those details in the end of this presentation. So so let's move. Let's continue. 2008 Olympic year, all the start of the difficulties and and healthy problems for a long long time came and all start from the training camp in in, in Portugal at May, start of the May, uh, he did a uh, five-step uh, jump and he hits his heel, heel, very, very strong way to the barrel of the long jump place. And that means 
painkillers and everything for the long time. And because of that, his body weight dropped down. So normal body weight on, on that time was 92, 92, 3 kilos, and it dropped down to the 80, 80 kilos. And then came back injury. Maybe you have seen the uh, Golden League uh, competition in, in Berlin 2008, when Tero did only one throw. And he, uh, he won that competition with one centimeter. Tero, Tero did 80, 85, 21, and And Andreas Torkilsen did 85, 20, one centimeter. So I really can say honestly to you that this is the year we made biggest mistakes in, in our training, training systems. And here, 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 here are the, here are the, all the mistakes we did. Tero started to compete, competing even if he wasn't 100% healthy. But you, you, 2007, world champion, gold medalist, Olympic year, very good competitions, you have to go forward. And not another mistake is that Tero throw too hard throwing sessions in the summertime. I mean, many times, many times, like there was competition on Sunday, on Wednesday, Tero did hard throwing session. And many times he did over to 85 meters in throwing session. And then Sunday competition, 82, 83. Nothing, nothing it, it was too much on, too much on, on those years. And don't do that kind of mistakes. So, so, so even if you are younger. And of course, technical uh, problems came because of, I think, because of the healthy things. Block leg went too, too much to the left. Shorter pull from here. And, and once the step run up was so, it's a little bit more leaning back from the crossover. And that, that, mean, that means also the timing problem. Timing problem. Of course, Tero did over the 87 meters also this season. And here you can see one, one of the longest throw in this summer. And this, the same kind of throw uh, is from uh, Beijing Olympic final, when he did the same kind of block leg over the 86 meters. This is 87 meter throw from this summer. And look what is happening to the block leg and how, how it is working. But still over to 87 meters. So, so. but you ca you you saw the thing what is happening till the, in the end, a little bit too much to the left. But Tero's best part is that he can row always the same direction as his his block leg is going on. I mean that even even if his block leg went to the left, he he did it the row to the left sector. So that means all the forces go against the block leg and the same direction. Opposite way it is that you are, your block leg is going to the left and you are throwing to the right. It's not so good. Okay, then came the years 2009-2011. Of course, there, there is a European bronze medal from year 2010 and and the level was from 85, 85 to 87 meter so so the level was quite a high but he didn't get the, the 90 meter level on the, these seasons 
and first time we we noticed and worst signs were about uh, recovery problems. So Tero started to be uh, almost 30 years old athlete and the, the journey, journey we have made before and is very hard work. Long training sessions, a lot of working. And one example was that like uh, in, in th that period, Tero had uh, every uh, fourth or every fifth week was like resting week. And in a resting week, he did four hard, throwing, uh, hard training sessions. So it resting day, hard training sessions, hard training sessions, and so on. And that kind of system didn't work in these years. I, I, I really think so. And at the same time, we changed a little bit our, our system. They like a gymnastic game along. We do a lot of more coordination and we try to change the system. But there wasn't enough courage to crop the volume of the training. So still we do the same hours of training in one week, even if we change the training system. And what what was the problem here? Get out the body. He didn't get out the body, the max, ec, maximal explosion. So it was quite a, okay, but like that, it, that was missing. And uh, I, I also, this, this dress thing was that Tero was building his house at the same time. And even even if we, uh, we were thinking very carefully who is building that, ha that house. So, and so the first thing was that Tero just driving to, the, to the, uh, his house and watching every, everything is going on. But he has to take, take, take more and more energy for that, that, that building system also. So, so so that all things together problems. And like you see here, he, Tero was quite a good shape before the world championships in Berlin. He did almost 80, 80 meters last competition before that. But year, year, year came along. And this 2011 was Mycoplasma. Maybe you, maybe you understand what that means, but it, the whole, whole summertime went to healing from that. And also that year, 2011, we were in, in England, Club Roads. There were it easily 80, 83, 84 meters in, the, in February in, in, in UK. So very, 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 uh, very good throws, so, so that kind of thing can happen in, happen in long career. Maybe you, you are still interested what, what happened in 2000, 2011, uh, September till 2012 Olympic year. Jan Selesny, Selesny came to our team and he was, he, was, he was taking care about the technique. So the plan was, he is saying what Tero should do. I, I, I will watch Tero's throws and, and, uh, and well, what is the right way, word, but I, I will watch him and uh, we, we do all the, all the things by Jan Selesny's advices. So everything was changing. Every little, every single thing was changing from the standing position, from the run up and everything else. And it was very difficult for Teropat. And, 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 and it, it went quite okay, a little bit step by step forward, I mean technical way. But already I, I understood in the middle of the winter, maybe in South Africa, that that kind of technique is not working for Tero. 
Uh, and, and main reason, maybe, maybe, was that now he's starting to run with sprinters or javelin throwers. The, the young increase in training camps, like, I think, 200% of running, 200 meter run, running, 100 meter running, 50 meter running, like a sprinter. And there were sprinter coach, and he's starting every time you have to be not like this, you have to be here and run like a sprinter. <laughs> and those little bit higher angles didn't work for Terra's technique. I really think so. He, he lost some, that uh, natural style a little bit. And the season started under 80 meters and in, in, in Dim uh, Diamond League in Oslo, June, 2012, 74 meters. And then Tero was unlucky. He, get, he got the food poison from, from Oslo. And, and he was resting, doing nothing two weeks. And after, that, after two weeks competition in Pihtipuras, almost 84 meters. That was the first part, first thing also that I understand this what means resting, you know. But the old style of Teros came alive in the summertime. And I didn't fix that. I didn't fix. I, I watched Jan, uh, Jan uh, didn't work with us in the summertime. So <laughs> it, it started to be the mix up the uh, old Tero and, and half of was the Jan style. And uh, he ended his season for this, this throw. And these few competitions in the late of the, that summer, over the 80, 86 meter week, week earlier in, in Stockholm, and this almost 80, 87 meter, very, very, very important competitions for Tero, because Tero was very near to retired on that, that moment. Was it? <laughs> so. But I was very lucky that he continues his, his career. And what we learned about year with Jan, we get a lot of good information. Of course, Jan is, the, Jan is the best traveling driver in the world. Of course, I learned a lot of, lot of what, what he's thinking about traveling throwing, what kind of things he he, uh, he wants to, sorry, what kind, of, what kind of technical details have to be there and so, so on, so on. But this is the important thing and that nervous system starting to work after this, this year. So there was wrong model, what is the right word, but inside your body, you have, you have a technical model. If you are doing that wrong way year after year, like te tero, teros, teros, like I, I told, it's, it's, it's very bit difficult to fix those technical details. But, but then one year, totally different way, totally different way. Suddenly, there was a open place for the new technical model, or all old technical model. Every single thing we started to do in, in autumn time for the next season start to working out. And he, he gets his technical, technical things working very, very fast and very good. And this was the thing. Tero finally understood what means the resting, and I, I, I also. So I, I remember the year 2012, 
Tero had a, a long, long training camp in Potses Room in South Africa. He was there six weeks with Jan and his team. And the uh, Czech team is training very hard, but they had a system that they trained three weeks very hard. Then one week, holidays. They fly, fly to the beach, taking beer and doing nothing. Tero was asking me, how is possible that they, they, can, they don't do anything? One week resting. And that was, the, I think, the, the one point of the, this whole process, that Tero learned what means, means, means the good resting. And our system changed to the way that two weeks hard training and one week resting week. And that means almost doing nothing, just, just a little bit. Two weeks hard, one resting week. And of course, we got a lot of new movements from, from Jan's team. There's an uh, example for, for, the, for, the, for the drawing power system. Very, very much, very, very, very many new movements came to our team. And the, the, the winter time was very fantastic. And 2013, April, May in Portugal, I think that, that is the best training camp maybe ever. Maybe ever. And the javelin is quite a far away also. That, that, that was the thing. And you can see uh, three or four throws. And last row, last row was his Teros personal best in throwing session. It, was, it went 90 meters. So you can, you can see that it's quite a good throw. So. This one. But the st story continues so that uh, 10 days after this final throw of the final throwing session was where the di Diamond League competition in Doha. And Tero went to the, that competition and, and uh, that he will do easily over the 90 meters. And a little bit too much dry, trying and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of things happen. So, so once again, there was a surgery in 2013. But it, this is the latest years. You can read it from the papers. So, so even if there was a healthy problem, there, there, there was also celebrating the medals. Uh, Silver medal from Moscow, bronze medal from Jury, and a bronze medal from the Beijing. And then we are in year 2000, 2016, and, and the winter time was very, very good. I mean, almost, almost perfect one. They did very well in, 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 in drawing sessions, and he was healthy all the time. But in March, was it 5th of March in Potses Room, South Africa, the, the groin, groin injury. And uh, it was quite a bad already, but we... we we try to do so that without without operation, so so rehab, 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 and a little bit more strength to the, that area. But uh, next uh, uh, training camp was in Shanghai, China, before the start of the Diamond League, and that uh, that muscle didn't work any, any anymore. So surgery after that. And, and, and you, you can see here what, what happened. 
very fast back to the track, but, but uh, the technical things didn't work out as well we wanted. And you can imagine it's how difficult it is to lost three very, very important months, March, April, May, without any hard training session. So, however, over 86 meters, but, but uh, it didn't work, the, the timing didn't work out in the competitions. Or there was static almost 85 meters, but there was only one good throw. And in Kuortane, where Thomas was also, two good throws. And then in almost second last competition in Lappeenrand, one good throw. So maybe three good throws on the whole, whole summer time. But this is the, for me, most important thing, still continues. I want to talk about a little bit more about technique. I think that's why you are here, most of you. This, this uh, I think, most important technical details in Terostro. And, uh, and I, I will show, but show you a few photos soon. Good rhythm and relaxing beat till the end. And that is, that is the thing, speed till the end. No angles, low angles, no up and down. That means, that means, I, I will follow in, in uh, training session, this hip line, when Tero started, started his withdraw here, that this part is keeping the same level till the end. There, there, there's no up and downs like this. There is no impulse steps. And that is, that is the thing, keeping low till the end. Landing up, upright from the crossovers, not leaning back. Uh, movement of the right knee, that is the secret weapon of the Teros. I will show it soon. Upper body and hip line close till the end. That was the problem last summer. So the, the same thing I already show, showing you. Body position close till the end. That is the most one of the most thing, important thing for Teros throw. Upper body is moving a lot during during the pull. So I will show the photos how much is going forward from the from the moment that block leg, block leg comes to the ground and to the moment when. Tero is releasing the traveling. And last summer was that over rotation. So it didn't went straight forward, it goes to the left. And it was like this. And that 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 has to work also. Also. Solid block leg. Uh, every single year we have we are working with that. Uh, releasing travel into the right position, and it 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 really it really uh, it, that that part is better and better now when Tero is older, so he he don't throw to the bad positions anymore so often. I think so. Uh, that is that right knee right knee movement. That is that is the. I think I think only few throwers can do the same same kind of movement what Tero, Tero do. That means when he landing from the from the crossovers, then knee goes first to the right, and then it comes to the to the against the block leg. It comes to the right to the left, and after the block leg is on the ground the movement still goes, goes on. So it's a, it won't stop to the, that part when block leg is on the ground. And I really think that uh, that, is the, that gives the a very powerful strike against the block if you can do that. Uh, one thing is one, one Finnish thrower 
has done the same way. And, and that is separate. And in Finland, we are talking, talking about there is totally, if you are coin, there, there is another, another side of coin and Seppo is another side of coin. But they, they are doing the same way, this hips, hip strike or movement of the knee. And you, you can see it slow motion from front view. This is th that 91 meter throw. And once again. And here is the uh, photos from the 90 meter throw. If, if it fly 90 meters, it has to be quite okay, quite okay throw, I think so. So, so landing upright is one thing. Here you, you can see how low the Teros crossover is. It's very near to the ground. He didn't jump it high. He, he, it's very, very, very near the ground. And you can see this is the maximum Maximum, the, uh, this it's top here. He won't do the right, right, uh, uh, right leg going. Not not here. It's top where where the where the knees are in almost the same line. This is the max maximum. He 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 is like stopping it from this position. Of course, the push up of the to the. To the crossovers is very very strong one, and he flies quite a long. The crossover is quite a long one, but it's it's this is the maximum he takes. Landing here, and here you can see 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 the right position when 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 the upper body is closed, and you can see hip line is closed, upper body is closed, and the. The head is a little bit going to the right and position a little bit like this. And shoulder down line is here, here. And this right leg is still going forward. And it's going to the, that, that position. And now you can see the, from, from this moment when the block legs on the ground and here to the release, how long way it, the upper bar is moving forward during the pull. It's quite a long, I don't know what, what is the, if you, we are counting it like it's one, over the one meter forward. And that is, that is the thing. And of course you, you have to keep very tight with, tight very, with your free, free, free hand here, not over rotating, just all the forces forward. Anything else? That kind of kind of things. This this is quite a great pos position. Position that you are drawing the line from here to the to the right shoulder. It's quite a straight. And at the same time, even if you are landing upright, upright like here, you are moving from here. So you 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 have to up up upper bodies starting to lean a little bit back. You don't go like this, forward like this, not forward like this. It has to be, has to be a little bit leaning back upper body. Okay. Last one. You don't have that on your papers, but I, I want to just show the amazing career of Tero, Tero. So, so 87 times over the 85 meters in different competitions. Uh, Tero has thrown in many competitions, three, four, and even five times over the 80, 85 meters in, in same competition, but different competitions. And we had a plan that when Tero ended his carry, he has thrown 100 times over the 85 meters. And 
maybe next after next season hopefully <laughs> hopefully <laughs> yeah that means 13 competitions yeah and maybe maybe getting the average of 10 best throws a little bit higher i think this is quite a high 50 best competition average is over 88 meters <laughs>